Are we rolling? Oh my god. Rolling <gasps> with the homies. I didn't even look at the questions. I want to be surprised. But I didn't either. Oh, no one did. So we're all surprised. <laughs> <laughs> Hi, Gorge. My name is Gut Nick. And I'm Viola Chachki. And welcome to another episode of No, no Gorge. Gorge. <laughs> No this week we are so excited because I have one of my icons of my life, changed my life forever, Adam Ging Lambert on the podcast <laughs> today. Ging Diva Licious Diva Down. Aww. Thank you for being here. Thanks for having me. Yes. I'm very excited. I know. Let's get into it. We got it. a lot to like, we can like dish tea and coffee. <laughs> yeah. Tea and coffee and crumpets. <laughs> we had Dita Von Teas on the pod and it's like, Never. Viola, let's Diva Doll, yes. like in 12 Life. And if I had to pick a Diva Doll of my life, it's you. hundred percent. I've like Aww. told you to some degree before. That's no, really crazy. She's like a freak fan. No, like you. I'm, if you no, you're know. not. Yes. Are you kidding me? Yes. <laughs> no, truly when I was, I like was, where are all you listening? I was like adopted into this super Catholic, crazy family. Like I'd never even like heard of gay at all. And then you got on American Idol and I was like, that's me. I was like, I don't know. And I was like, I don't know what or why, Aww. but that's me. And you weren't like Aww. talking that much about like the f***ery of it all or whatever. There, but then it, never, it was weird because it never, like there was never a, a point of entry for me to talk about it. Like right. they never brought it up. I mean, if Ryan Seacrest had been like, so you're like, I would have probably well, been like, sure, you know. It was a different time. It was a different time and it just didn't, there, we weren't doing any interviews while we were on the show. Yeah. We weren't doing any press. There was no there was spot no discussion. for it. No. Right. Well, I remember going on some like chat board. I don't even know what it would have been. The early like days then. of like, Reddit. Yeah, Who like knows? some kind of thing. And I remember like someone was like, he's a f it. And I was like, what is a f it? And I Googled it and I was like, mm, this is me. I was like, literally yeah, obsessed. Definitely me. Yes, and then it was like, I'm a theater like diva. And I was like, oh my God, this bitch is taking theater references, oh making God. them punk rock and going <laughs> off. And I was like, this is everything to Aww. me. And just the way you like took all these cool inspirations and then made it your own and we're just like so in everyone's face even when they didn't fucking want it and you were like Fuck you Fuck and you. like <laughs> i'm here doing my art and it's Aww. like i think i'm so punk rock because of like your influence so thank you yeah That's it just really means sweet. so much to have Aww. you here because it's like full circle <laughs> i know yes I know. I know. I one of the weird thing is that we met when you were doing makeup on a shoot yes and I was it doing was before makeup. you started doing drag. I think. Yeah. Yeah. yeah no, right. we did. Yeah. I did. What a special time in your life. I my know. God. I was so excited. I had just moved out to Los Angeles. We definitely like Kiki. Oh, for yeah. Sure. For yeah. sure. Yeah. But when you were on Idol, like I was saying, it's like was such a different time. Yeah. For everything and like no one was really out there gay and like, it was as wild weird. as you. It was like it was it was it just wasn't. It, it wasn't cool, you know yeah. what I mean? It was really right. hard to like, for main, you know, obviously like going out to WeHo, you know, right. whatever. And on MySpace. But uh, yeah, but like uh, like mainstream, which is like what I got dropped into because of Idol, mm -hmm. it was just like, whoa, wait, what, how do I navigate this? It was not easy. It didn't yeah. make a lot of sense. I like didn't feel ashamed. I felt like very sure of my, my f tree, you know, which you, like, what you could see. I was like, I'm gay, and like, yeah, and I was 27. I had oh like been God. through most of my 20s, like, kind of becoming who I was and like being comfortable in my skin and loving myself, which took a while, yeah, you know. But by the time I did Idol, it was like, okay, cool, I'm, I'm good. And then coming off of the show, and all of a sudden, you know, doing interviews and, and then having to like proclaim that I was gay, which I was like, well, yeah, I, I've been gay, I've been out since I was 18, but. Oh right, I have to say it. Right. right. I have, have to, to proclaim it. Yeah. You forget yeah. in those I'm like, oh, moments. Yeah. yeah. yeah it was very weird. But I think it's safe to say that you're like a trailblazer. Oh my like, god. Like a hundred percent. I remember so vividly like you being one of the first representations I've ever seen on television. No, a hundred percent. Especially like in American pop culture. Yeah. Like and, and there's so many people that moment. resonated with that, I'm sure, as young Thanks. as young people. It's insane. Well, and I it was mean, a TV weird time. Is, and TV is like such a tool for that. I mean, I think that's between TV and film and social media, that's why we've come so far as a community. I mean, like, absolutely. It's changed everything. I mean, I remember being in, in high school in the late 90s <laughs> and watching Will and Grace. And that was like the icebreaker for me. That mm -hmm. like helped me feel like, okay, this is all going to be fun. Well, and the weird thing about it was it was like every, like, 
interview that I did, a, a lot of them, especially here in the States, it was like, it was like, I had to sort of like justify presenting the way I presented like, oh, you're guy liner. And they would like <laughs> make a fuss out of stupid <laughs> shit. I was like, oh, you're wearing nail polish. Or metrosexual. Like, that was yeah, the words time. like that. Things yeah. like and that. And I was just like, uh, but, but at the same time, I was like, okay, well, if I have to like explain this, like gay explain it to yeah. the, yeah. to the you know, the straight media, I'm like, okay, fine. Then that's what I'll, then I'll be that guy. Yeah. And and it's crazy because now it feels like it's just come completely, what is it? One eighty three six. I don't know the word. It's but so it, we've different. got straight people now. It feels like, I guess the word is queer baiting sometimes. Mm -hmm. And it's hard to even say because like everyone should be allowed to do whatever they want, right? Even straight people. Yeah. But it feels like it sucks when it's like we had to go through such difficult times to get to this point. Yeah. And now it feels like people are taking. Um, well, it's trendy. It's, it's cool. Trendy. I mean, yeah. queer is cool. Yes. Yeah. I think queer like symbolizes like rebelling against your parents. Now. Exactly. Yeah. Like it's the thing to do. You know, at one point in time it was punk. At one point in time it was goth. At one point in time it was rock and roll. You know, back in the 60s. Right. You know, there's always counterculture. And I think queer is now sort of like the countercultural thing of saying like, you know. I'm rebelling. I can do whatever yeah. I want. Yeah. I have an autonomy of my body. Yeah. Like, Which is, it's, it's beautiful and it's great because even the kids that aren't queer are sort of like, dipping their toe or mm -hmm. checking it out and not as weirded out by it which right. is great yeah that's right there's definitely a huge pro to yeah. all of this and we deal with this a lot even from, with drag race and being on television it's like a parallel experience in that regard I yeah guess. for sure um just and drag race got, it started at the same time that was like the it was the same year i was on idol that's oh, when drag race started. 2009 yeah, yeah it? it was yeah i think it was i think the first season was the season i was on idol and then because i remember Raja. Of course. Oh, yeah. Raja I was remember so she close. was like, you were she was in my her... makeup artist on my first tour. Oh, oh my God. And literally God. left to go do Drag Race That's during insane. the tour. Yeah. Cheers. Not you, though. I had like, I had like, <laughs> I had one too many last night, so I'm waiting because I have more drinks to do tonight. I know. So I'm so trying I to pace myself. I was like, you know? It's like, got to pick your battles. Yeah. Well, that's, the, you know, getting older, you can't, it, the multiple nights in a row is really getting hard. <laughs> I know. It's difficult. It didn't used to be this difficult. I agree. I feel like I'm a, Ancient now, oh my especially God. keep it up with this one. Like oh Joanna. my gosh, as if yeah, no. I'm like, I'm like, want to go out for a light bite, and she's like, I don't know if I can today. Yes, like, uh, <laughs> but you guys were both out last night. We, we were we ran into each other. Yeah, I know at the wild, the wild, the, the wild. We went to the opening of your new yes, you did. Bar That's restaurant, right, the wild. Everyone, yes, it yeah. was so gorgeous. Thank you. You're this it amazing is. burlesque performer. Oh, oh he's amazing. Him. Yeah, he's um, right, like a stand. No, I'm like. He's so hot. He lives in Miami. So He's so hot. hot. He's beautiful. Gorgeous. So hot. And I'm like a fan of his boy last, because I yeah. what call it. It's super androgynous too. Like he's yeah. he's like definitely like ripped and like handsome, but he gives you like a little makeup. She points her like toe. A little, yeah. 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 She gives it was like yeah. so weird. Yeah, I was, I was watching every month. Was, I was shocked. I saw his stuff online and I was like, that's who we need for the Yes, it is night. perfect so for his theme like of the bar. Those big feathers. Yes. It was, it was like so good. The pheasant feathers. Yes. Yeah. And he wanted to do fire, which I would have lived for, but we couldn't in that. It's, you know, there's plastic Honey, vines hanging that's yes, the the story of my life. I've been trying to be a fire performer forever and during the pandemic I got to do it because yeah, we were outside, outside. doing yeah. drag at a JC Penny parking lot. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> What's the worst gig you've ever had? That's what I, I want to get to those oh burning God. questions. I my, know. Okay, the worst gig I ever had was I. This is before Idol. I did a production. <laughs> There's an off Broadway musical called Debbie Does Dallas, based mm -hmm. on the porn, and uh -huh. it's like full fun, like comedy, like a parody of the porn. It's really funny, very clever. A woman that I worked for at the very beginning of my career, her name's Anita Mann. No joke. I mean, that's, I that's classic. That's not Lover a joke. Classic, classic, um, classic. She does like cruise ships and Vegas topless shows. So she took this play, this off-Broadway musical play comedy, and wanted to turn it into like a topless show. But keep keeping the comedy, which is weird because most of the topless shows in Vegas are like serious. a little more serious fantasy. Yeah. They're not comedy, right? So she was trying something new and... Good for her. It was an interesting concept. I did like a couple of these presentations in Vegas, like little 20 minute presentations to try to pitch to the different casinos. Yeah. Oh. And none of them really Like bid. auditioning almost. Yeah, we like we're pitching the idea, you yeah. know, and it was really fun. I did it. And then a year later, randomly heard from her. She's like, hey, we're finally going to do Debbie Does Dallas. And I'm like, oh, great. <laughs> And we're gonna do it though in Reno. Oh. Well, a gig is a gig. No, 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 Reno. I'm sorry, no, Lake Tahoe. Lake, oh. Lake Tahoe. Interesting. But because there's casinos there. Yeah, so. there's casinos, yeah, yeah, yeah. and technically there's like the, the state line runs through Lake Tahoe, so oh. it was on the Reno side 
of mm. so legally yes it's nice. nevada i was broke like i right. needed a gig right i was dirt poor love she's like the cast is great we got this girl from new york blah blah, blah. i was like cool who else is in the cast oh well the ensemble is gonna be made up the, of the the girls that have been doing the topless show for us at harvey's casino in in lake tahoe for the past couple years i was like oh okay but it's like broadway production like acting no it's a broadway script yeah <laughs> 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 off Broadway script. Off, off Broadway. So Broadway. I get up there, and the people that I had worked with on the presentation were a bit more, you know, they were accomplished singer, dancer, actors, and the topless girls that they had in the presentation were from the Vegas show, so mm. the caliber was high. Were you topless? I, I was. I actually ended up being. We did a like a <laughs> locker room scene. Yes, huh? where I had to be in a towel. Are yeah. there videos oh. of this? Are you like somewhere? Oh my god! This is and amazing. my name was Dick. The quarterback, of course. Um, I was very excited to do this, but the, the the girls that were in the show were not of the caliber of the Vegas girls. <laughs> Caliber's like my favorite It was word. a it's bit... Nice. <laughs> I'm trying to be like nice. I know. But they, it was like definitely a bit like... Oh, a step down. Yeah. yeah. A step down. They had never really acted before. Right, they were right. basically strippers, uh -huh, you know, glorified. and they were all really nice. I got along with everybody, but it was like... The, you're, you're handing them like a script <laughs> and they're like, wait, what? And literally it was like, we would be playing to like five people oh in the audience like God. it was dead and, and you they were, were and they were like old drunk casino gamblers bitches. that wanted Tahoe. to see boobies oh my not God. me <laughs> so i had like a big like power ballad that i was like really working really hard to like nail <laughs> <laughs> no one gave a shit. Like they were out there, like like, like, boom, heckling, the like, like laughing, eating chicken tenders. And... Someone threw something at me once. No. I was like, oh <laughs> that was like the low point. <laughs> what they wow. throw. That's you. my worst. Game. I mean, that sounds fabulous to me. <laughs> like, so then after about like two months, I got out of there because I was. You like, were there for two is... yeah. months. I was like, this isn't. Oh Damn. This is not it. And then, how long after that were you on American Idol? Probably like four or five years later. Oh my god! Yeah, I was like in my mid twenties. Yeah. So you were like a theater diva at yeah. that point. Mm. That was my yeah. next question too. I was like, so would you identify yourself as a theater gay? Yeah. For sure. Yeah. For, For sure. sure. Well, especially like as a teenager. Right. Like I was a musical theater kid, and I thought that my my dream was like, I'm gonna go to Broadway. I want to go to right. New York. That's what I, I'm supposed to do. And then I kept doing theater, and kind of somewhere along the lines of twenty five-ish I was kind of like okay yeah but like I'm kind of interested in more like subversive stuff like I started going out a lot and like getting into the nightlife in LA and there was a thing called Miss Kitty's Parlor do you mm. remember did, did, I've heard, heard of that, that. I know what I love so, that. you know this I'm old so this is a long time ago but it was at the Dragonfly and it was Friday nights Miss Kitty's Parlor it was like all alternative so it was like <laughs> what year is this this is like 2005 that's six. what the good alternative yes. was going yeah. on we're and talking it was like MySpace era yes okay. it was all that and it was like drag queens there were like there were definitely like trans girls there there were goth girls there there were witches there were <laughs> there were like I want to go back circus, right now. circus like, people yes. I mean it was like really out there you know every shape and size and I used to like get my big old glitter platform boots on and like oh. truck because I lived like three wow. blocks down and I would just walk up the street to Miss Kitty's. Oh my, oh my god, cute! And it was like my miss, that's where I wanted to be. I love that. I, you, I feel like you're like lucky to have experienced like know. the smartphone. I feel like killed the alt scene or something. I don't know. Like I was <laughs> it's true. Up yeah, on everyone's MySpace scared now in yeah. that era, and I'm like I I yearn for that. Yeah, that was the good alternative. Like yeah, good alt era. Yearned is crazy. I do. Lots I of flat for, ironing. Oh my lots god. Of flat ironing. You have a foundation. Yeah. What is it? Uh, 11, neutral, warm. <laughs> <laughs> I was going to say, whenever anyone says foundation, I'm, I always immediately go to make it. I think about it too, and I'm like, why did I call it that? No, yeah, I started a foundation called the Feel Something Foundation. Oh my gosh. Yeah. <laughs> it's definitely LGBTQ plus focused. It's, mm -hmm. um, you know, we've been like partnering with different uh, already existing uh, organizations and sort of teaming up and, you know, bringing visibility and funding to them. And one of the things that I've really got specific about was before you saw all these sort of attacks on gender affirming care centers um which happened like this last year or two right. mm -hmm. it's been a we, rough year it's been rough for queer people yeah for sure and we started we, it was something that i found out more about before this at all started kind of coming under attack there was one in san diego at scripps called um the rady center and i had heard about it like somebody had kind of tipped me on it and i and i did some research and i'm like this is amazing it's amazing that this exists and we went down there and like met with them and like they introduced us to some 
some of the parents and, and, and young people that were there. And I remember just feeling like, well, this makes so much sense that there's something for the family to like, to understand what their, their kid is going through and what their kid is exploring and give them the language and, and yes. the information and all this stuff. And then, and then, you know, a year later, there, it, you know, all over the country, it's like being attacked. And I was just like, I wish that people could just, you know, all these ignorant fucks. I wish they could just stop and do some research and just try to learn something. Yeah. They, they don't know what they're talking about. Yeah, it's no. all this BS that right. they're just running around with. And it's well, like it's rampant. People, I think people do believe what they kind of want to believe and they right. believe sort of what aligns with their fears, you know? Oh, 100%. Absolutely. Like when I came out uh, to my parents, it was like they had an issue with it, but it was just, it was mainly because they just truly, like you said, like didn't, didn't have understand. the language. Yeah. They did not understand the only things they had seen in the media were just like awful like trans people are getting murdered like it's gonna happen and they were just scared and were like taking it out in a weird way because they did not have the language or yeah. understanding or education on how to handle it so yeah it took, yeah but yeah it takes amazing icons like you and people to be out in the media and just like share positivity and the education that's needed to and push being forward there and getting to like see firsthand like like a mother and you know her child who's who's transitioning like seeing that relationship asking the mom about what her experience was asking the young person about their experience it was like it just made sense it just made so much more sense you know e equipping these people with information and and support and that's the thing that that kills me about it is like you know the attack on these types of centers is it's like these are doctors like these are yeah. medical professionals that are doing, do, good doing work. great work yeah. You know, looking at it from, you know, a biological, psychological point of view, like they're they they know what they're talking about. They're yeah. basing this on research that has been conducted. Like and they even like the thing that I love about it, too, is from what I saw, it was like it's not just like run on in and transition. It was like it's like a process like they're really working with the families and making sure the young person is is fully aware of what they're going through and they have all their options. And it's like a process and it's done in such a responsible way yeah well and that's, that's what the thing that kills you me. talk about all the time is like it's not just running in transition you know yeah. there is steps and you do have yeah. to be and respectful people, of your body and your time and really know and your psyche and be sure yeah and, and, and talk to the right people it so black and white all the time like people are always like in interviews be like so do you want kids to be on hormone blockers or no and i'm like baby it's way it's, it's more way more nuanced than, than that, that. It's yes so much it's really interesting too because the whole the whole gender revolution is so fascinating <laughs> it's like i remember being a kid and my, my mom has told me the story and my dad that i was like probably like six or something and I, in the back seat of the car just like i want to be a woman <laughs> one yeah. day yeah i just really like expressed that like that's I mean, what i was feeling like yeah. i want to be a woman and my my mom turns around and she goes um, honey, but you're you're but you you have a penis. You're a boy. And my dad goes, actually, there are things you can do about that. Really? <laughs> oh my god! Fear. My that mom was like, funny. Honey, don't, don't confuse him. You know that but, is everything. But it's you know that my I'm very lucky. My parents are super chill. And they, Telling your six year old open. there's things you can do about that is everything. I mean, it's there's hilarious. You that is about their You don't you don't have to have one if you don't want one. You know. Oh my god, that is so funny. Yeah. I am obsessed with that. Yeah. Being raised that way in a non judgmental environment environment really helped me turn it around and try to help people yeah, you know yeah, that, that has helped me want to you know be a you know a positive influence on young people and just yeah. a good example yeah. of what a supportive upbringing can do can yeah. produce yeah. you know the confidence alone yeah the confidence. i mean seeing you on stage with queen it's like oh my god i gag every time oh, i'm no, like is insane. that is that like your dream gig or what but I didn't mean, you it's like, just like you sung with queen on idol yeah on the did finale. you get to pick that well no the producers set it up no better Is was, that like the most well, thing? Well, I auditioned in the with the song with Bohemian Rhapsody. So it was like they, you know, put two and two connected. together and they were like, right. oh, well, yeah, let's let's invite them. I just couldn't believe they said yes and they came on. Oh my god. And that was surreal. And yeah. then they were like, this bitch is our Freddy. <laughs> it's no, so I mean, what good. an honor, right? It was nuts. I and mean, it was definitely like a moment of sort of like resonance. Like we looked at each other and we were like, oh, this feels really good here. Like this feels oh good. And, and then after I did my own first album and first tour, then an opportunity came up and we just started working together.
That was incredible. We've been touring together for over 10 years. I mean, you fit it's amazing. Yeah. Like, it's just so beautiful. Like, you bring this, like, theatrical vibe that was just there. It's fun. It's, like, it's really so fun. amazing. Well, and I feel like you honor Freddie in a way, too. Yeah. It's, like, it feels like... That's important. A, a, I think it's really important. A special moment. Yeah. Well, I knew the minute they asked me to start working with them, I was a little, like... Of course I said, yeah, because I was like, this opportunity is amazing. It's insane. And it's going to be so much fun and a challenge and all that. But I definitely was, like, a little apprehensive because I knew that the fans would be right. kind of skeptical. And, of course. I knew I didn't know if I could pull it off. I'm like, right. dang, this is you know, big big shoes. Big to fill. shoes to yeah. fill. So I brought like big platforms. Literally, literal big yeah. shoes. Yeah. yeah, I thought I would go with it and be literal. Yeah, <laughs> I feel like I've grown a lot in it. Like I I look back on some of the early first few performances I did, and I'm a bit all over the place, like right. nervous and sort of like overdoing certain things and sort of not grounded. You right. know, not and comfortable in your no, in your own. Like yet. completely like. Ah! I've learned a lot about sort of like, you, you don't have to do everything, you know, that whole mm -hmm. thing. Like just getting a little older as a, as a performer and getting a little Absolutely. more grown, you kind of go, oh, I don't have to push as hard. Yeah. You know, you less can is more. I can get comfortable and yeah. just own the stillness. And yeah. We talk about that a lot yeah. to, as performers ourselves. It's really powerful. And yes. I mean, touring with one of the most iconic bands in the world and like seeing their experience and being able to just like feel those vibes. That's th that is one of the best be, parts yeah. because they like light up Roger and Brian. They're they're both incredible musicians. They they're legends. They've seen so much. They've done so much. They've created this music that's like iconic. Icon I mean, insane. I, 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 so queen. Iconic is not even the right word. There's like needs to be a new word for it. It's yeah. like it's Gra insane. earth changing like yeah. i don't even know truly like, when I, I like there were queen songs that i knew that i didn't know were queen songs like right. they're that powerful the songs sort of like precede who they are right. like Go they're beyond. that known you know like you know you're a kid at sports events or whatever with your family and you hear we will rock you or we are the champions yes. i didn't know who they were but right. i knew the song yeah right. you know they had infiltrated like the zeitgeist of yes. straight culture of beyond 100%. sports culture it's like yeah it goes beyond just yeah. you know them as a band it's like, zeitgeist is a good way to put it it is in like in the zeitgeist. Yeah. Yeah. yeah 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 so do you tour life i mean i our tours are definitely on a different scale than the queen, the queen <laughs> but uh, but it's a different type of queen tour uh, that we're on. But um, it can be difficult. We've learned so. Like, I mean, I think it's kind of lonely for us sometimes. Luckily, I found sometimes you. I feel that way. Yeah. yeah. Do you ever like you know? I mean, I don't know. I don't know how many seats you're playing on these tours, but it's like going from that to a to hotel a quiet room hotel room. Alone, yeah. It's so cliche. I say it all the time. But it's, it's like, real. It's, it's a real feeling of like, it's it, they're just contrast of energy. Yeah. yeah. Of being like totally validated and looked at and pumped up. And mm -hmm. then you're by yourself and you're kind of like. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Like, yeah. No. But you know, like you do get used to it to a point. Yeah. After a while, you kind of start to figure out some tricks and a bath is good. Uh -huh. <laughs> a bath Honey, really helps me. in the hotel room. I know. I get. Like, Heads I, will roll. I love a bath. I yeah. love a bath. You know the thing about touring too for a while, it was like when I was single and I was touring, it was like the thing that kind of got me like through certain tours is like meeting people in random cities and kind of having like little weekend romances, mm -hmm. like little flings. Oh, that was yes. fun. I got until, that. until when? At what point did that change? Well, I mean, well, now I'm in a relationship, so right. not doing that, but it that that was my normal for so long mm -hmm. that it actually like I think it actually like kind of stunted some of my dating habits and relationship habits because I was so used to being transient and just sort of like meeting somebody That's here meeting somebody there I say and then you could try and then you try yeah. to have like a regular sort of more traditional relationship mm -hmm. and you're like I don't know, know what I'm do doing this. no yeah. Yeah. literally that's happening to me right now there's like some guys that I'm like, oh my God, I literally could maybe even like date you. This is so fierce. But then I'm like, never in Los Angeles. Right. I'm never here. And then I'm like, so are they just going to be happy with that? No. And then you come and back and they've moved on or they have yeah, a full life. And, and you're like, yeah. oh, time didn't just pause. Wait for me. Yeah, yeah. exactly. Yeah. <laughs> and I'm like, yeah, you didn't wait for me. Yeah. yeah. What's, no, what's wrong with you? It's exactly <laughs> that. Other, and then I meet guys in poor I couldn't pour it's like I'm a fucking sailor but it's true I have like lovers all over the world which which can Shout be really really romantic Shout like it can be really lovers. fun all, <laughs> all, all, all of you guys, all of you guys. Start I will them. be back Gareth <laughs> you know, it's like Steven. credits coming down the street yeah, Star Wars <laughs> yeah. <laughs> not Star Shout Wars out to all yeah. of you. <laughs> Thank you guys so much for your service. Yes, yes, for yes. your service. Thank you for your service. And that was I, fun for a while. For a while. And I'm, then you, and then it, then you, it starts feeling a little shallow because you're just like, I can't set it's roots down. I can't like build anything. I can't get real intimate. I, I'm so, so lucky to be with somebody right now where like we're building a real relationship and it's like, we live together. It's been three years. I'm really happy. And it's three like, years. it takes, yeah. 
We met oh during the pandemic. God. Time is just yeah. flying. I'm like, how long have I, know. I known you? Oh my yeah. God, that's crazy. But it's it's just, it's it's a whole different experience. And it comes with a lot of like learning. I find myself in moments being like, oh, right. Okay. Compromise. Yeah. Compromise. Compromise. I think that's the ish. Yeah. yeah. Well, especially when you're a performer, you know, yeah. it's like. You're a star. Yeah. I'm a star. <laughs> but that's the beautiful thing is that, uh, you know, Oliver, my partner, he's also a star. Right? Yeah. And he's fabulous. And like, that is a nice balance too, you know? It's like it's some maybe he's not you know famous performer, but he his energy, energy is a star. You no, know? he's amazing. Yeah, right and that him. really helps like sort of balance the scales a bit. Yeah, and keep me in check, and I keep him in check, and it's great. Oh, I love that. Oh, that sounds so, so nice. I'm yeah. crying. Like, I'm like, like damn, damn I like that. It took a while. I need my it took star a, balance. It took a really long time. I mean, I've definitely been through my mental health journey the past. Yeah, I mean, 10 how years. was it like coming up in the industry with you, kind of being the trailblazer of life? It, you know, it really. I, 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 I think I've always presented sort of like a, you know, cool and collected kind of mm -hmm, persona, but absolutely. I definitely have gone through it. Like right. it was being dropped into sort of the celebrity world quickly mm -hmm. is weird and like did management Very get weird. the queerness there were they were like there was that there was the whole like you know kind of working in a straight industry which yeah. was weird you know yeah. there wasn't a lot of songwriters or producers or management like a lot of them weren't queer it was very mm -hmm. straight yeah and that was a little you know tricky in moments to be understood but that's changed a lot like right. there's a lot of queer writers now and management all this stuff but it took a while i'm lucky that i started from a pretty confident place but it definitely like did its number on me you know yeah. and made me very insecure in moments mm -hmm. and sort of doubtful and then you start kind of going is this all going to get like yanked out from under me like is this like a when is this going to be yes. over it's and am i going to be the last the one to know oh, that it's God. over we we talk fear. about this all it's, the it's time insane. the it's fear sucks really hard yeah and it's like i'm like when do i when is like when, when do i hit my stride you yeah know, what at what how many years until i hit my stride it feels so good to hear so it's, no, it's, it's, it's it's up and down i mean i remember coming off the show and being like well it's all downhill from here because that was like the apex of hype right yeah when i was on the show and then like you know my first album they got all these great people involved and there was all this anticipation and all this and then like some shit went down on that award show and Wait. a bunch of people got mad at me no no sort of back can you talk about, about that show. when yeah. you you kiss your guitar Guitar player. Yeah. I like, I, remember like I was saying, I was like, I'm from very like very like Catholic area, Catholic school divas. And when that happened, like all my friends' parents and stuff were like, You're not allowed to listen to him. Like they yeah. were like, You're not allowed to listen to him. People were like literally like they felt betrayed. It was wow. crazy. I was like, what? Like, what was somebody. it like from your It was side? weird. It was part of me kind of got a kick out of it because I'm right. a little bit of a I like to kind of push attention buttons whore. a bit. Yeah. Attention <laughs> whore. I mean, I knew that like it's pop, right? right. Like, I'm, you know, I come from the, the Madonna generation, like pushing yeah. people's buttons is part of the game. Right. Yeah. I didn't realize that the industry side of it would get affected. I didn't realize that people would get so turned off like within like the, the label business. and everything and take a step back wow. that's the part that surprised me Game and that's dark. changed because look at what like Lil Nas X has been doing he's right. been doing all the things and doing it so well of I love course. him I, I absolutely love him I think he's brilliant same he has industry support that's the difference because right. it's, it's changed, changed. It but totally you're changed. one of the people that had, has changed of it. you yeah you know yeah. Like, that's what a trailblazer that's what being a trailblazer really is and it's it's harder for the ones who had to run mm -hmm. you yeah know? and yeah. I remember right. when that happened and it was People were shocked and it was shocking and it's like yeah and it was it was like the whole thing was like what about the children you know it's the same of we, course we were Song it again and today. Dance. the children the children i'm like the kids don't care oh it was crazy the, but i kissed a guy whatever yeah. you know what but although I, I also put a dancer's head in my crotch well you know you win some <laughs> you lose some that was the stuff that my publicist at the time kind of was like let's focus on the kiss yeah <laughs> which was very clever so at too. the time it screwed some stuff up right but i think now big picture looking back on it now it's kind of cool right like it's, I feel so cool. it's beyond I feel cool it, without yes. that yes. moment so many people wouldn't be able to do what they're doing right now they pulled me off of a uh, the morning the good morning america the next morning because it was the same network wow. and they were all freaked out Thanks. so i went on another network to do a different morning show and we did an interview about it and they showed madonna and britney kissing mm -hmm. at the mtv awards years before right. and then they cut to a clip of me and the guitar player and our mouths were blurred out they were censored and I was like, uh, wow, wow. Why? And I looked, it's at, crazy. I looked at them in the, at, in the commercial break and I was like, why, what? And they were like, oh, well it's so recent. So we, and I'm like, but you didn't blur, wait. I don't get it's it. It's crazy. And I'm like, so it's a double standard. It's, yeah, it's cause I'm a boy. It's hot to look at two girls kiss, you know, from the, from a the cis male straight gaze. male gaze, yeah. right. Yeah. 
But to see two men do it, it's like men being feminine is a big no no. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I'm grateful that I'm still getting to make music and still working and performing, but it's been it's been tough. Yeah. It's been really tough. And then seeing someone new come up that's, you know, somebody that's queer who doesn't have to deal with those same right. obstacles. It's changed. Uh, you know, part of me is like really excited for those people because I'm like, yes, good, good right. for you. And then other part of me, little part of me is like, damn. It's very right. showgirls. Damn. There's all, you know, yeah. it's like yes. you're Crystal Connors. It's like, damn. you know, yeah. I'm happy for her, but at the same time, I'm like, damn. Damn. <laughs> damn. <laughs> it's very yeah. showgirls. Yeah. But, you know, but all of that up and down and sort of how that affected me mentally, like, I think I've been through like the worst of it and the doubt and the comparing and all that stuff. Right. And I, I love where I'm at now because mm-hmm. I'm in a place now where I feel like, you know what? I know exactly who I am. There's no one, you know, I'm the only one of me. Exactly. You can't compare yourself to anybody. You just got to do what like you like. Do your yeah. art. And it's, I, I saw a thing, um, Rick Rubin, the, the record producer was talking about how great art is not made for an audience. It's made for yourself. I believe so you're that. making it for you in hopes that somebody will relate to it out there. Mm-hmm. And I've, I've kind of always come at it from the other point of view. And over the last few years, I've started to kind of come around to like, you know what? I'm going to trust my instincts. I'm going to do what I like. And that's it. I yeah. believe that 100%. Yeah. It's like, this is my therapy. You know, this mm-hmm. is how I always looked at it. It's like, this is my art. This is for me. Yeah. And if it touches someone else, that's just Great. an added bonus. Great. Yeah. Yeah. Well, you're a solidified icon diva. Oh, absolutely. One hundred. Thank you. It's beyond. Thanks. Well, I love that so I much. I'm like, I'm like, I needed this podcast. I know. <laughs> I'm like together. I'm so happy. I can't wait. I can't wait for you guys to hear what I'm working on. Please. I'm Tell us now. Can we get a I'm just no, no, no. no I'm, but I'm, I'm working on new music, <gasps> and it's like I'm gonna, I'm doing a little like left turn. So oh really my excited. god. Yeah. Like a new yeah. genre switch. Or what we're talking like, about. Like, like I've done it, but like I haven't been doing it, so I'm gonna do it. I'm so excited. I'm so excited. Well, thank you so much for being here. Thanks Adam. for having me. It was me. such an it. honor thank to you. have such a trailblazer in our presence. Thank You've you. inspired us so much. Truly. Yeah, it's just so much. Oh, I just did that. I did that. I hate when people do that. That is hilarious. Thank you. Thank you. We live for you. Thank, Thank you. So I live for both of you too. You know that. Thank you guys so much for watching. We had the most amazing time. I hope you guys had an amazing time with our diva doll, Adam Lambert. We are just bringing in our icons. It's unbelievable. Truly. It's I mean, like, as our second guest, you're like, we're just hitting it's it so crazy. hard. I feel like dope. Dita's dope. I love. I love that you guys did Dita. Oh I my mean, god, she's so dope. We're yeah. doing our biggest inspirations ever. I think. Yeah, oh, we're just going crazy. down the list. Yeah, I love it. Using our podcast to get our icons. In the- <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> I love it. I'm so excited to see your new project. Oh, get ready. Yes. Get ready. And if you're in WeHo, check out the Wild. It is truly so amazing. It's one of we'll my. We'll probably see songs. you there. Honestly. Yeah. hundred percent. Are I'm you coming already- tonight? On my way now. Okay. Well, I'm dressed. I'm ready. Um, beat uh-huh. beat down, like you know, yeah. just yes. put a little powder under the eye. On <laughs> theme. <laughs> yeah. Yes. Well, thank you guys so much for watching another episode of No, no Gorge. Yeah. And we'll see you next time. Bye, Gorge. For our full conversation with Adam Lambert, check out our Patreon. No, no Gorge. Gorge.